from leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations. We're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now. Good day, brothers and sisters, and welcome to another blessed episode of Stick to the Script, brought to you by the Israel of God Bible Study Class. We are Christian Israelites who believe what's written in Revelations 14, 12. Therefore, we keep the commandments of God and have faith in Jesus Christ. We also believe that the Lord's house is a house of prayer for all people. I'm Sister Gwen. I'll be your host today. We do move rather quickly through the scriptures, so please make sure you have a pen and paper available so that you can take notes and refer back to them later. At the Israel of God, we teach by subject and title, and today's title is The Light of Life. Let me introduce you to the panel of our beloved brothers who are here working hard in the vineyard for us today. So first up, we have Brother Justice, Hailing from the Israel of God here in Phoenix, Arizona. Brother Justice, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Sister Gwen. Thanks for asking. And we want to welcome you as well to Stick to the Script. Uh, a member of the Israel of God uh, here in Phoenix, sisters and brothers. Uh, so welcome to the show, sister, to help us labor in the Lord's vineyard. It's good to have you on as well. Thank you, Brother Justice. Uh, next up, we have Tony P. He's from our um, IOG Atlanta camp. And welcome, brother. How are you today? Hey, good afternoon, Sister Gwen. Nice to meet you. And good afternoon, panel, and good afternoon, viewers. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you all for having me. Okay. Um, bringing up uh, the rear, we have Brother Volney from Israel of God, Buffalo, New York. How are you, brother? I'm doing wonderful. How are you feeling, Sister Gwen? It's a pleasure to uh, to be here with my fellow sister and brethren in the name of Christ. And uh, hopefully we'll have a blessed lesson for all those in the listening audience. I'm doing well. Thank you, Brother Volney. Um, and then we have our reader, Hananiah. He's from our Israel of God camp in Houston. Hello, Hananiah. How are Praise you? Praise the Lord. Brother? Grace and peace, everybody. How y'all doing? All right. Good. Good. Thank you, brother. Good. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to kick this uh, lesson off with Brother Justice. So, Brother Justice, uh, go ahead and kick the script for us. All right. Let's stick to the script, sisters and brothers. Uh, that's a good title, The Light of Life. Um, so. We're going to take a look at this, and hopefully by the end of this, uh, uh, stick to the script, this episode, sisters and brothers, we have a pretty good idea of what this title is stating, the light of life. Uh, so we're going to start this off at Psalm 82, and we're going to take a look at the, the opposite of light, sisters and brothers, um, what the whole world is dealing with, because everybody's not dealing with this light uh, that we're going to see. Psalm 82, uh, Brother Hananiah, uh, pick it up at verse 1 for me. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked, say lie. Uh, so these guys that he's talking about, that God is standing in the congregation, judging sisters and brothers, these are men. But he's asking the question, how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? You know, because say the devil is busy, sisters and brothers, and he has deceived the whole world. And the whole world is following after him and the doctrine that he put on the table, sisters and brothers. And That's right. he has already got this entire creation killed once, but he tried to take you with him to the lake of fire. Uh, pick it up at verse five for me, my brother. 
they know not, neither would they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Right, so a lot of people don't even know that they worship in the dragon, Satan, the devil, and ignorant sisters and brothers, and they continue to walk on in darkness. But that's why the Lord, he has devised a plan to have this gospel preached into all the world so that everybody will understand this thing. They're going to know it, sisters and brothers, but then now you have to decide. Are you going to choose to follow the Lord or are you going to continue to walk on in darkness? But he has said that we are gods, right? And all of us are children of the most high, right? No matter your color or where you come from or what you look like, sisters and brothers, we are all his creation. Uh, read verse seven for me. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Uh -huh. And see, this is why the foundations of the earth, they are the course, sisters and brothers, because death was added uh, to this creation. It was added because of sin, because of this darkness that the world is dealing with. Uh, let's go to Micah, the third chapter, Micah three. And when you get there, my brother, pick it up at verse five for me. Thus said the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. They bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. Therefore, night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Uh huh. And so, you know, you got a lot of people, they seeking the Lord, sisters and brothers, and they pouring into these churches trying to get a little bit of this light, a little bit of this truth, this word that the Lord has put on the table for us uh, that's going to lead you into everlasting life. But you got to be careful and pay attention. You got to try the spirit by the spirit, sisters and brothers. Like we always say, stick to the script, right? Read that to me. But they're telling you that you're going to have peace and, you know, they want you to come in there and uh, line their pockets with your heart earn dollars sisters and brothers that's the doctrine of the day is riches and gain but and if you don't and you come contrary to what they preaching this falsehood standing behind that tree in the midst in darkness behind their father satan the devil sisters and brothers because he has ministers too again he got his own doctrine he got his own church he got his own denominations but when you depart from iniquity the bible said that you make yourself a prey and they even prepare war against you sisters and brothers and, but he's telling them that night is going to be unto them, just like all you who follow him, sisters and brothers, uh, and it shall be dark unto you. And they don't have anything to tell you that's conducive to this word, sisters and brothers. And he said that the sun is going to go down over the prophets. And this is how you know you can tell the tree by the fruit that it bear. And they ain't bearing no fruit, sisters and brothers. They ain't bearing no good fruit, the fruits of the spirit. Uh, which are fulfilled in love, sisters and brothers, but the day shall be dark over them. Go ahead and read verse seven for me, my brother. Then shall the seers be ashamed and the diviners confounded. They shall all cover their lips for their sayer is no answer of God. Uh-huh. So they're going to be ashamed when the Lord return or even when the Lord pour out his spirit like it was prophesied in these last days. You know, you got a brother uh, over here right around the corner. He preaching that Jesus died one good Friday and rose Easter Sunday. They in the dark, sisters and brothers. Uh, Christmas is uh, pagan and Easter is pagan, according to this word. But they confound it. And the Lord is going to uh, shut their mouths when he returns, sisters and brothers. But for their sayer, there is no answer of God. They don't have the answers of God, sisters and brothers, because if they did, then they would be reading this word to them, which you're going to see that this word is light, sisters and brothers. This word is a lamp that's leading you on the right path to salvation. Let's go into Psalm 34. Psalm 34. And pick it up at verse 4 for me, Brother Hananiah. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked uh -huh. unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Uh -huh. So this is this is what you got to do. But this is Jesus speaking through the mouth of David, sisters and brothers. He, see, he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. He wasn't seeking after these lying, false preachers that can't give you no answer. You got to seek the Lord. He said he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were enlightened, sisters and brothers. They were enlightened by this word. Right. 
through the understanding of this word that again is uh, leading you down the path of everlasting life. And he said, and their faces was not, were not ashamed because all who believe on the name of the Lord, they shall in no wise be ashamed, sisters and brothers. Now let's go into Psalm 13. And when you get there, my brother, I want verse three. Pick it up at verse three. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Uh, so he said, consider and hear me, Lord. O Lord, my God, lighten my eyes. You know, give me the understanding so that I can obtain salvation. Then I can truly say I'm saved because right now, we enduring and trying to get it, sisters and brothers. Even all the people who are falling in these false churches, following after these false prophets. The majority of them, they seek him, but they just haven't found him yet. But don't stop seeking, sisters and brothers. If you uh, are tuning in to this program, continue to tune in to this program and to some of the other programs that, on the Israel of God platform. Because we are teaching the word of God, sisters and brothers. But he say, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Again, it was added because of sin. Because of the world is uh, lay, lying in darkness, sisters and brothers. But this word is the light. This word is the lamp. He said, let my enemy say I have prevailed against him. That enemy, Satan, the devil, who is trying to, again, take you with him to the lake of fire, sisters and brothers. It was made for him and for all the angels that followed him when they rebelled in the, in the, in the third heaven, when they was cast out of heaven, sisters and brothers. It was made for him. It wasn't made for us. But Jesus has came and he has died. But he told you that he came to destroy him that had the power over death. Say the devil, sisters and brothers. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Read verse 5 for me. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Uh-huh. And so this is the hope that we have, sisters and brothers. Like, uh, uh, I think it's Peter. He say, you know, always be ready to give answer for everybody to ask for the hope that you have. According to this salvation, what else is this, sisters and brothers? We know that we have an appointment with death because of sin and ain't nothing to rejoice in that. But we try to escape this second death. But the Lord has given us access back to the tree of life through this word, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Job, the 33rd chapter. Job 33. Because this is word that is lightening our eyes and enlightening us to make us wise and uh, able to uh, take hold of salvation. Job 33 and verse 27. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he would deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Uh huh. So the Lord, he looking down to see if there's any that have repented, sisters and brothers. You know, because we have to be sorry for breaking God's commandments and sinning against him. And he say and have and perverted that which was right, because all for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and it's no profit unto them or to you, sisters and brothers. Uh, but he say he will deliver his soul when you confess your sin before God and stop doing it and walk according to his word. He said he will deliver his soul from going down to the pit, and his life shall see the light, sisters and brothers, because it's this light according to this word that we are trying to attain. We are trying to Take hold of this, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Isaiah, the 49th chapter. Isaiah 49. And pick it up at verse 5 for me, my brother. And now said the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Uh -huh, so the Father has... Uh, giving Jesus a body, sisters and brothers, to come and be the sin offering for the world. And he say he has sent him to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered. Israel is still in captivity, sisters and brothers. Uh, he say, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Verse 6, go ahead. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Ah, uh, so he say it's an easy thing. It ain't nothing that Jesus should raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the preserved of Israel, sisters and brothers, who is in captivity all over the world right now. 
he say, but I will also give thee for a light unto the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So Jesus came to be a light system, brothers, and all that he was talking was this word, the word, uh, the Old Testament prophesied to him, his, uh, his birth, his first coming, his second coming, sisters and brothers, his death, his resurrection. It all, it all pointed to him. And this is that light, sisters and brothers, that has uh, uh, been put on the table for us while we all lie in darkness. Let's go into Acts, the 26th chapter. Acts 26, and I want verse 22 when you get there. Go ahead, my brother. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Uh-huh, so we have attained help from God, sisters and brothers. We have attained this light in this darkness that we are dwelling in, sisters and brothers. And he said, I continue this day witnessing the both small and great and telling them about the good news of the coming of the kingdom of God, sisters and brothers. First, Jesus kingdom for that thousand years and then the father's kingdom. And he's telling us through this word how to enter into the kingdom, sisters and brothers, saying none other than those things which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Because Moses prophesied about Jesus. You know, he said that through Jesus, through, this, through Abraham's seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Because he came to die for our past sins to give us access to eternal life, sisters and brothers. But did you read that 23? Read that 23 for me, my brother, because the prophets prophesied too. Go ahead and read. That Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the world. That's right. So. Moses prophesied about this and the prophets prophesied that, that that Jesus should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, sisters and brothers. And if you call yourself a follower, then you're going to walk as he walked with this hope that he's going to raise you up from the dead. And but he has shown a light unto the people and to the Gentiles, because remember, he said he was going to be a light even unto the Gentiles to the end of the world. But even unto Israel, sisters and brothers, showing us the way unto eternal life in the kingdom of God. Let's go on to Isaiah, the 51st chapter, Isaiah 51. And when you get there, my brother, pick it up at verse four for me. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. Uh-huh, so he said, listen to him and to, and to the prophets that he had to speak his word, sisters and brothers. He said, Allah shall go forth that shall proceed from me, right? But we're supposed to all be keeping God's commandments. It tell you in Ecclesiastes to fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. He said, I will make my judgment to rest for a light unto the people. See, this is how you make it into the kingdom. This is how you stand against the judgment, sisters and brothers, by keeping by first by faith, by believing that Jesus died for your sins, for your past sins. And, and then by walking in newness of life after you had that, have received that proper baptism in the name of Jesus. And this is what's going to deliver you, sisters and brothers, your faith and your obedience unto this word. Verse six, go ahead and read. Lift your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Uh huh. Because Hearken the end to, is near. The end is near, sisters and brothers. But go ahead and finish that, and then we'll end it right there. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. Therefore, the Lord, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. And come singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Uh huh. So, sisters and brothers, the end is near. And those who ain't right, there's a reward for the righteous and for the wicked, sisters and brothers, by walking according to this, this word, this light, or by walking according to darkness. If you continue on, sisters and brothers, you're not going to obtain salvation. 
And don't be afraid of what anybody going to say about you serving the Lord and walking according to his word, sisters and brothers, because he's telling you that the redeemed of the Lord are going to return and they're going to come with singing unto Zion and they're going to rejoice before the Lord, sisters and brothers. So I thank you guys for your time. I'm going to turn it back over to the panel. I pray you guys was edified. Amen. Tight work, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wonderful lesson. Yes, sir. Praise, Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, sisters Thank you. and brothers. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Justice, for bringing that strong lead on today's subject. Uh, brother Tony P., what you got to say yes, about ma'am. Hey. contribution? Hey, brother. Yes, ma'am. Excellent work, my beloved brother. I like the way you set it off and I like the way you laid the foundation. You went into that Psalms 82 and that verse five was a killer mm -hmm. where it says they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. So they gonna mm -hmm. continue to walk. But instead of looking for the light of the Lord and looking for the light of his word, they rather walk mm -hmm. on in darkness. They rather stumble. They rather not try to get it right on this side because they do not want to walk in the Lord's word. And because of that, the end part of that verse says all the foundations of the earth are off, mm -hmm. of course, because the Lord okay. is a God of order. He said everything up the way it's supposed to be. Now everything is backwards. You got men wanting to marry men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, women wanting to marry women. Why? Because they're not walking in the light of this word. They are walking after the God of this world, which we know is Satan, the devil. And quickly, I also want to bring out the fact that you went to that Micah chapter three. And then when you hit verse number five, talking about those false prophets that the Lord said, make his people err. And what was so good about this, it says they bite with their teeth and they cry peace. But he that put of not in their mouths, these false prophets prepare war against them. And that brought me immediately to Acts 19 chapter when Paul was preaching against idolatry and all the silversmiths that was building gods of silver and idols to Diane mm -hmm. and everybody else, they was trying to get after Paul because Paul was taking money out their pocket. And the same thing yep. happened to us. We tell the people not to go to church on Resurrection Sunday, which they call Easter Sunday. When you tell them not to go to church on October 31st, which pastor calls trunk or treat, even though it's Halloween, <laughs> you're taking money out their pocket. They're going to want to do something to you. So I like the way you tied all that in, brother, the light being the light of the world. In Jesus name. Excellent precepts. Uh, yes. Back yes uh, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you, Tony P. And Brother Roni, uh, what do you have to say about what Brother Justice brought out? Brother Justice, Brother Justice, that was a great lesson. Wonderful job. And I like the way how, um, you know, the title is The Light of Life, but I like how you also show what the opposite of light is, how is darkness mm -hmm. and you show how the people walk in darkness. And um, I agree with brother Tony P also that scripture you brought in Psalms 82, where you started it off, how it talks about those that are walking in darkness. It just makes the whole world out of order. Everything mm -hmm. is wrong because there is so much darkness in it. Where if we have this light, things would just be so much better, as you were alluding to with the scriptures you went to. Uh, and Micah also, how when there's darkness, you stress on the darkness again. When there's darkness, there's no vision. Because we know that without light, you cannot see. And you right. were showing that. Right. People don't have the light. And then you, you went along and uh, you made it clear that this light is the word of God. This light is Jesus. And without that, the world is just in darkness. And um, I like Job 33, you went to how uh, it talked about the pit. Going into the pit is the, when you're in the pit, you, you that's the opposite of light because you're not going right. to see anything. Right. It's darkness. Right. So I like the approach that you took of how you brought out what darkness is as opposed to light. And um, it, it was just it was just great. And um, you made that point about how Christ was sent to reveal that light, reveal his word, and he is that light. So wonderful job, uh, Brother Justice. All right, praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother uh, Volney. Uh, brothers, uh, thank both of you for sharing your thoughts about what uh, justice brought forth. 
And then I just want to take a quick moment to ask our viewing audience to please remember to like, share, comment on the video, um, and also subscribe to the Israel of God. Okay, so we're going to move on. Brother Tony P, you're up. So come on, Professor, bring the knowledge. <laughs> hey, praise God. Thank you, sister. And again, uh, thank you, family, for having me. So let's go ahead and continue on this subject, the light of life. If we could, my beloved brother, let's start this at St. John chapter 1. We want to go to St. John chapter 1, and let's read verses 6 through 9 first, and then we're going to skip up. When you get it, go ahead and read. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might be. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That light was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So it gave us a talking about John the Baptist and John the Baptist was brought forth to manifest the true light that was going to come into the world. We know this is Jesus Christ. John wasn't that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. And let's see who the light is. We said it's Jesus, but let the book speak for itself. Let's skip back up now. Still St. John 1, but we want to read 1 through 5. Go ahead, brother. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended the night. Sisters and brothers, you see what the book says in verse four, it says in him in Christ Jesus was life and that life was the light of men. We're going to see what that light is, sisters and brothers. It says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. When you bring this word to other people, sisters and brothers, and they're not trying to follow you along in their book and they're not praying for understanding, they can't comprehend what you're talking about. Even when we deal with the simplicity of Christ, you can show them in Genesis, the second chapter, that the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. And that is the day that we are supposed to gather together and worship the Lord and keep it holy. But they want to tell you that it's the first day of the week. Why? Because they can't comprehend the light that's shining on them in the darkness. Let's continue, my beloved brother. Let's go now to Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Isaiah, chapter nine. We're going to get a second witness of Jesus being his light that was sent into this world. Isaiah 9, we're going to read verses 1 through 2, and then we'll skip to 6. When you get it, go ahead and read. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, Upon them hath the light shined. And we can see this being fulfilled, sisters and brothers, in the Gospels because Jesus himself walked in those lands. He walked in the land of Galilee. It says the people that walked in darkness seen a great light. What was that light? That was Christ Jesus, sisters and brothers. Let the book tell us. Go ahead, verses 6 through 8. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. The everlasting father, the prince of peace, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord has the Lord sent a word into Jacob, and he hath lightened it upon Israel. So this is why Christ was born, sister and brothers, and the average church goer don't understand this. He's not born to send you to heaven and rapture you off. He is born to sit on a throne, even David's throne. You can read that in Luke, the first chapter. But it says right here, the Lord sent a word unto Jacob, that's his priest, Israel, and have and they have lighted upon Israel. So what's going to light upon us, sister and brothers? The word of the Lord. It gives us salvation. It gives us eternal life. But people want to disregard that light and they want to follow other things. And that's why the book said earlier, and that's why uh, Brother Justice read earlier, that they would continue to walk in this darkness. But you keep turning into programs like this, sister and brothers. Come on out to the Israel of God on the Sabbath day. We'll read this book to you and we'll show you, sister and brothers, how you can abide in that light and how you can get eternal salvation. St. John, the sixth chapter, the Gospel of St. John, chapter six. And my beloved brother, let's read 47 through 51. St. John 6, 47 through 51. When you get it, go ahead and read. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So, sisters and brothers, he's telling you how to get eternal life. He says he is a living bread that came down from heaven. And if any, he gives his flesh for us to eat. And if any man eat of this, he will have eternal life. Well, he's speaking symbolically here, sister and brothers. But what is it that will give us this eternal life that Christ was bringing to us? Stay in St. John chapter 6 and let the Bible explain itself. Let the Bible interpret itself. Let's read verses 63 through 68. Go ahead, brother. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you, that none can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you so go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Thank you, my brother. And that's why we had him read 63 through 68, because 63 says the words that I speak unto you. This is Jesus saying his words are spirit and they are life. And then when people went to walk away, he asked the apostles, Peter and them, are y'all going to go? And they said, Lord, where are we going to go? You have what? The words of eternal life. So sister and brothers, you want to get salvation and eternal life, you got to stick with the script, stick with the scriptures here. And that's why Satan and his ministers are trying to discredit this book right now, because they know this can get you eternal life. This is the only book on the planet that everybody is trying to discredit and nobody has read. Usually you read things that you try to discredit because you don't understand it or you disagree with it. But you got people that can't even find the book of Genesis that want to disagree with the whole Bible. So, sister and brothers, stick with the script, stick with the ministers that the Lord sent you and learn how to get you some salvation and eternal life. And this is the light that Christ was talking about. Let's go to uh, Psalms 119 and let's read verse 105 and then we'll skip to verse 130. Psalms chapter 119, 105. What does it say, brother? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He says the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. So if you're walking around in darkness with little understanding, sister and brothers, read the Bible and pray to God for some understanding. And he will give you that understanding that you need, which is his word. Go ahead. Verse 130. What does it say? The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So if you simple and you want to get some understanding, deal with the word, sister and brothers. This is what gives us eternal life. This is what gives us favor with the most high. This is what we need in this dark world because we're going to read next that soon that the evil hates the light. But let's go to Isaiah, the eighth chapter. We're going to read one verse, verse 20. We adjure you all always. And that's why uh, our brother's name, the title of this show, stick to the script. But people want to get you outside of the script. And once you get outside of the script, this is what you're going to run into. Isaiah, chapter eight, one verse 20. What does it say, brother? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak Amen. not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. We got the Bible right here, all 66 books, the law, which is the Old Testament commonly called, and the testimony, which is the New Testament commonly called. Genesis to Revelation, it says if they speak not according to this word, if they don't stick to the script, that's because there is no light in them. And they are walking in darkness and they want you to walk in darkness with them, sisters and brothers. Why? Misery loves company. Let's read that. St. John chapter 3, my beloved brother. St. John chapter 3, let's read 19 through 21. St. John 3, 19 through 21. What does it say? And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he mm. that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And that's why the book says, we, we read earlier, if they're not uh, speaking according to law and testimony, there's no light in them. And it says that men love darkness rather than light 
because their deeds were evil. Instead of them walking in newness of life, instead of them walking in the light of the gospel that Christ gives in order that they may have eternal life, they rather wallow in the darkness. They rather live in the misery on this side and not understanding that they're going to have the lake of fire on the other side if they don't repent. It says everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. They hate the words of the Lord. And that's why they're doing the evil because they want to put the words behind them and they want to do their own thing. And it was that's what they always teach right now. YOLO, you only live once. Yeah, you live once. But the book also says is for man to die once and then the judgment. They tell you about living once, but they don't tell you about the judgment that comes after that as a consequence of how you live it. But the book says he that doeth truth, he comes into the light that his deeds may be made manifest. A couple of more we got, sister and brother. So once we got the light of Christ, once we got this gospel, what are we supposed to do? Matthew, the fifth chapter, 14 through 18. Matthew 5, 14 through 18. What does it say, brother? Ye are the light of the world. A city that yeah. is set on a hill cannot be hid. Verse yes, 15. Neither can light yes, a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Amen. Let your shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily Amen. I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. And that's why we had him read this gospel of uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter to you, sister brothers, to show that once we receive this light, once we, once we get baptized in the name of Jesus for remission of sins, once we repent and walk in the newness of life, then we become the light of the world. And our responsibility is to share this gospel to all the sons of Adam so they can see our good works and that our light may shine before men so we can glorify the heavenly father sister and brothers not to beat nobody up with this gospel not to always try to debate and try to win things but we're trying to get salvation because we want everybody to make this thing so we are the light of the world sister and brothers we're supposed to walk in this light and we're supposed to rebuke the darkness that everybody else is walking in two more places we want to go let's go to philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 we want to read 12 through 15. philippians chapter 2 12 through 15. whenever you get it brother go ahead and read Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. So Paul is telling the Philippians the same thing that Christ told us in Matthew, the fifth chapter, that we should be blameless, harmless sons and daughters of God that walk in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. And we shine as lights among the world. But he also said to sisters and brothers that we have to work at our own salvation with fear and trembling. And we have to be obedient unto the word of the Lord. Because one thing that a lot of people aren't teaching right now in these churches is that obedience is a requirement for salvation. You can't just say, pray to, pray to sinner's prayer, Lord, uh, I'm a sinner, this, that, and whatever, and you automatically are saved. No, there's a process with that, sister and brothers, and obedience is a big process to that. And we have to make sure that we obey what thus said the Lord, that we can walk in the light of the gospel. Last place, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 through 4. When you get it, brother, please read. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received the mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen, brother, and amen. And the light of the light, sister and brothers, is Christ, the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, is going to shine unto men. But if you're not careful, if you don't stick to the script, if you don't remain in this book, sister and brothers, the God of this earth, even Satan, the devil, 
is going to blind us so we can walk in darkness with the rest of these false prophets so all of us can get cut off. So if you want to remain in the light of the life, sisters and brothers, stick to the script, stick to the law and the testimony, serve your God, and walk in newness of life. I turn you back over to the panel. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh. Thank you, Good stuff, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Wonderful lesson. Praise Great God. job. Yes, sir. Uh. For our contribution, brother. Thank you for feeding the sheep. Um, brother Volney, give me the Amen. Great job, brother Tony P. Uh, you really broke it down and, and you truly showed who that light was, what that light represented and everything. And what I really liked is that you took it to the next step about how once we are revealed that light, which is the word of God, that that light is su supposed to shine from with us also. Just like Amen. Christ was our example, Christ is the direction we're supposed to follow in. He had that light. And now when we follow him, we should have that light too. And it should shine in the midst of everything, this darkness that's going on in this world. Uh, I really like how you brought up uh, in Isaiah 8 and 20, how it talks about um, the law and a testimony, which is the word of God. And if people are not speaking what thus saith the Lord within the pages of this book, the law and a the testimony, then it says there's no light in them. In other Amen. words, they're blind Amen. and they cannot see. That's so right. with that said, uh, going back to going to Matthew, how you talked about how what the scriptures say, ye are the light of the world. When we get that light, now it is our duty to shed that light on the people that are in darkness so that they can have an opportunity to see. Because we have been blessed to see that light, which is this word of God. Christ within us, that light is shining forth. And that's basically what this show is all about. We're, we're trying yeah. to shine that light upon everybody that's listening because this world is crooked. Um, like in Philippians, it says shine as lights among a crooked and perverse world. Yeah. So that's what we're yeah. trying to do with yeah. this, sticking to yeah. the script, sticking to the word of God, which is that light, which is Jesus which you clearly show and what it is, it boils down to your last scripture that you went to. It's the gospel, that good news that Christ brought because in death there's darkness, but in Christ there's life and that everlasting life that you brought out in the lesson. Great job, brother Tony P. Mm -hmm. Amen, praise God, praise God. All right, thank you brothers for that feedback. Uh, I certainly would like to say uh, I appreciate the Israel of God, all the work that the brothers do bringing this uh, light to the world, shining this light on the world. I know it's a lot of work you do in the vineyard to prepare for these shows and bring this message. So I want to say thank you to all of you. Mm -hmm. All right. Praise so, God. Brother Justice, what's your takeaway? All right. All right. Well, that was an excellent exhortation, uh, uh, Brother Tony P. Um, Praise God. You know, seeing how the whole world is in darkness, you know, it's so wonder why they can't find the book of Genesis <laughs> when it comes down to it, you know. But it's not funny, though. I mean, because, you know, you're talking salvation. You're talking about right. salvation and, um, you know, either entering into the kingdom or being without uh, in outer darkness, sisters and brothers. But um, I like how you broke down what that life was. Um, John 1 and 4, it say that in Jesus, or in the word, in Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. Um, and you went into John, the sixth chapter, and, you know, you plainly showed us, it say that he gave his flesh uh, for the life of the world, right? Mm -hmm. So that the world could have eternal life, sisters and brothers. And then he also told you that, um, that, in verse 63, he said that his word are life, right? And the words in verse 68, uh, when Peter asked him, where shall we go? He said, you have the words uh, of eternal life. So, you know, his flesh was the life he died to give us uh, 
access to eternal life, that word was the light. And then in Psalm 119, at the mouth of two or more witnesses is a fact established, sisters and brothers. But it tell you that the word is a lamp and a light. And so, you know, Jesus bear witness of this light, sisters and brothers, this word. John the Baptist bear witness of the word and of Jesus. Just like we yeah. have to, as as we shine uh, as lights in the world, sisters and brothers, following after Christ. And unless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, right, who is the image of the Son of God, should not shine to them whom Satan has blinded their minds, sisters and brothers. I really appreciate that, uh, that Corinthians 4 because it really breaks it down, the whole um, um, title, sisters and brothers. But – yeah, yeah, excellent exhortation, brother Tony P. I like how you uh, put it on the table and just showed us what that light truly is and that life truly is. So praise the Lord. I'm going to turn it back over to the panel. Praise God. Praise God. All right, thank you so much for that. So brother Volney, you're up. Go ahead and bring us some understanding. All right. Thanks for having me here once again. And uh, as the title is The Light of Life, we're going to continue on with this topic. And I'm going to start us off right in John chapter one. And we're going to pick this up at verse one because uh, it's clearly been shown what this light is, who this light is. But we're just going to meditate on this and we're going to see these scriptures and we're going to drive the point home of what this is. But let's go to John chapter one and pick this up at verse one. And when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And in those five verses, we learn a whole lot. It tells us that in the beginning, you go as back as far as you can imagine or think, it says it was the word. That word, it, all, it tells us that it also was God. So that word was, was with God and that word was God. And then all things was made by that word and nothing that exists was made without that word. But also with this word, it says in verse four that in him was life. And the life was what? The light of men. So this word had this life and that was the light of men. But then it says that light shined in the darkness, but the, the darkness didn't want to under, they couldn't understand it. They couldn't see it because they did not have this word. They were not accepting it. But let's take it a step further. And we're going to go into Proverbs chapter four, because we're going to see that when you are living in darkness, your path is not clear. You have no vision. You cannot see. So you have to accept this word or this light in order for you to see clearly. But let's go to Proverbs chapter four, and the book is going to explain a few things to us. Proverbs four, and we're going to pick this up at verse 14. And when you get it, you could go ahead and read. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. So you see here, we're getting some warnings. It says that don't go in this path of the wicked. Don't go the way of evil men. Actually, don't even avoid it at all costs. If you happen to, to see it, it says run, turn away, pass, get away from it. Because it's a path that's going to lead you straight to destruction, people. But check this out. Jump down to verse 18 and let's look at something else on a contrast to it. Verse 18, what does it say? But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. 
Oh, so the path of the just or the path of the righteous, it says it is as it's being compared to a shining light. Because if you are walking in righteousness, you're following that light. And we're going to find out what that light is. But the way of the wicked, it says it's darkness. They don't know. They can't see. And if you cannot see, if you try to walk somewhere, you go trip, you go fall, you go stumble, you're not going to get anywhere. But that's the path of the wicked. So we see this contrast between the path of the just or righteous and the path of the wicked. One is light and one is darkness. But let's move on a little further. And we're going to take this to Psalms chapter 119. Psalms chapter 119, and we are going to read starting at verse 105. Psalms 119 and verse 105. And when you get it, go ahead and let's see what it says. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Oh, okay. So now we see what he's saying here. He says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That word. But what did we find out about that word in John 1, verse 1? It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And that word was light. And as Brother Tony P. showed us in the other verses, that word and that light was Christ. That was Jesus. So this word that is a light unto our path is the words of Christ. It is the law, people. But check this out. Jump down to verse 130 and let's see what it says. Verse 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Oh, so the entrance, when you have Christ in you, when you have his word in you, as what it says, it says the entrance is going into you. You begin to light up. You become as a light. And that light is, it can't be hid. You want to, you shining that light all over the place because you have the light. You shining it in the midst of this crooked generation. But it says it gives understanding unto the simple. You start to see so much. And all the things you see, you want to share it. Because it has, you have been enlightened with this word of God. You have Christ within you, people, once you get this word. But let's go a little further. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6, back to Proverbs chapter 6, because we're talking about the light of life. We've seen how this word is light. This word is life. But watch this. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6. And we are going to read verse 23. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. When you get it, let's see what the book says. Go ahead and read. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Oh, we keep seeing it all over the book. Now, it doesn't say the word here, but it says, the commandment is a lamp, which is the word of God, thus saith the Lord. The commandment is a lamp, and the law, the law and the commandments, it says it is light. Why? Because it is the word of God, as we keep seeing all throughout the book. And reproofs of instruction, these instructions that this law gives you, it is the way of life. You know how you have signs, and if you want to go the direction of life, you follow the signs of what thus saith the Lord, because that is the way which is going to lead you to eternal life. You have to follow the captain of your salvation, which is Christ, which is the word. But check this out. Let's move right along and let's pick this up at Psalms chapter 27. Let's go to Psalms chapter 27. And we're going to see something here concerning this light because it's all over the book. We've been going to scripture after scripture 
And you keep seeing this all over the book. So hopefully we are getting the point about the light of life. Well, let's go to Psalms chapter 27 and let's read the first verse. Psalms 27 and verse 1. And when you get it, my brother, let's see what the word is saying. Go ahead and read. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. In whom shall I be afraid? We keep saying it over and over. But here it says, the Lord is my light. We know who this is talking about. This is talking about Christ. You can read it in other places about who this Lord is, but the Lord is my light, which is the word. But it also says, the Lord is my salvation. That's what we're trying to obtain, salvation, eternal life. So therefore, we have to go to wherever the light is, wherever the word is, the commandments, the law. We have to go to Christ, people. He's that light. But then it tells us that the Lord is the strength of my life. And we know that the Lord is the, the word of God. The word of God is the strength of my life. And who is that word of God? Jesus. He's our strength of our life. So you want life, even life eternal. You have to follow his word. It's all throughout the book, people. We keep seeing it place after place after place. Now, let's go a step further. Let's go into the New Testament once again, because we're going to see how the old and the new coincide with one another, just like the scripture the brothers shared to the law and the testimony. And if they don't speak according to that word, it's because no light is in them. But let's go to John chapter 8, and we're going to see what Jesus said himself. If you want to believe anybody, believe Christ. But let's go to John chapter 8, and we are going to pick this up at verse 12. And if you got that red letter Bible, it should be in red here. And watch what this is going to say. John 8 and verse 12. Go ahead and read. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That sums it up right there. This is Christ himself. Brother Justice told you. Brother Tony P told you. And now I'm telling you too. But then we got Christ. He, they, You believe Christ at least what he's saying. Gee, it says Jesus spake again unto them. And what did he say? I am the light of the world he that followeth me you follow that light shall not walk in darkness why because you got christ in you you have that life but then it says but he shall have the light of life you got the word of god in you you, you know which way to go now you're no longer walking in darkness you don't have these mixed directions coming from these false prophets who try to take you away from the law or the word, which is the light. And when they, when you end up following that, you end up walking in darkness, which is going to lead you down that wide gate, which is going to be a path of destruction. But that narrow way where that light is, few find that. But that is the light of Christ. That's the direction we need to go in. And what's real interesting, when you look up the word light, one of the first definitions is it says that something that makes vision possible. Without the light, you cannot see. We've learned that the light is the word of God. Without the word of God, you are blind and you're walking in darkness. But watch this. Let's take it a step even further. We are going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and let's start at verse 1. 2 Timothy Paul, chapter 1. Apostle. Go ahead, verse 1. 
Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, so Paul is even letting you know the promise of life, which is in who? Christ Jesus, because he is the light of life. But watch this. Jump down to verse 10 and let's see what it says. Go ahead and read. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought an immortality to light through the gospel. Oh, so Christ did what? He hath brought life because the wages of sin is death, people. And if you keep breaking the law, that's what you go end up being a lake of fire. But Christ hath brought a way out. How? Keeping his word, believing in him, believing that he is that light. He's going to light your path. You follow him. You don't have anything to fear, just like it said in Psalms chapter 27. And he brought um, immortality, that's everlasting life, to the light through what? The gospel, which is his word. But watch this. Let's go to our last place, and we're going to end it here. John chapter 12, and let's pick it up at verse 35. John 12 and verse 35. When you get it, you could go ahead and read. Then Jesus said unto them, yet a little while it is the light. Excuse me. Then Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things oh, say so, Jesus. Yeah, you could you go go ahead and read that next verse 46. We jumping down to um go ahead, verse 40. These finish up that. These the end of verse 36. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Verse 46. I am come a excuse me, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Oh, that sums it up, people. Jesus said, I come as a light into the world. Whoever believeth on him should not abide in darkness. But check it out what he said in verse 48. He said, he that rejecteth me receive and receiveth not my words, which is that light that we find out and found out. And we kept telling you, you got somebody that's going to judge you. But he tells you it's that word that I have spoken. My words, Jesus' words that he's spoken, the same shall judge you in the last day. What is Jesus' words? Jesus' word is that light. Jesus' words is what we've been reading all throughout this book from Genesis to Revelations. So if you don't have that, there's no light in you, as the other brothers have showed you. But that is the light of life. We have learned that it is the word of God and none other than Jesus, people. That's what we need. I'm going to pass it over back to the panel. All right. Amen. Ooh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent work. Excellent work. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise yeah, the Lord. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, you know, sir. I, I want to say I like that Proverbs six and twenty three uh, for the commandment is a lamp, and I praise Jesus for those commandments. Uh, otherwise, I'd be fumbling around in darkness trying to figure out what sin is. So, right. thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Praise All the right. Lord. Uh, so, Brother Justice, uh, what did you think about? Uh, Brother Volney's contribution. Excellent work, Brother Volney. Uh, excellent uh, uh, exhortation. That's the way to take it home, you know, and to uh, carry that anchor and to drop everybody in the darkness who reject this word, sisters and brothers, because without light, just like you gave that definition, there's no vision. But Jesus, he came uh, to, to be that light that shines in the darkness, like you read in that John 1 and 5. Um, and I like how you showed that contrast uh, in that Proverbs, the fourth chapter, um, the path of the darkness or the wicked. Um, it, 
with that evil and the path of the justice as a shining light. Um, and then you, you went and set it off and, uh, it's all over the Bible, sisters and brothers. You know, we reading it all throughout this Bible in different places. It testifies of itself. It's of no private interpretation. It interprets itself to the law and to the testimony, like Brother Tony P. read. If they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them, sisters and brothers. Uh, Psalm 119 and 105 show that the word is the light. That Proverbs 6 show that the commandments and the law are light. The light of life even, sisters and brothers. The Lord is the way of, uh, uh, is the light, sisters and brothers. He was full of this word, which is the light. And he was the word. And but that one verse, uh, that Second Timothy one, uh, showed that uh, the promise of life is in Christ Jesus, sisters and brothers. Um, in verse ten, that He manifested that light to eternal life unto us. So, yeah, praise the Lord. Excellent work, my brother. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to the panel. All praise right, thank Lord. you, brother Justice. Uh, brother Tony P, give us some final thoughts. Yes, sir, my beloved brother, you really brought it home and you really set the pace, uh, the anchor, like Brother Justice said, for this whole precept, the light of life. Uh, and I'm going to repeat what he said in uh, Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And I like how you showed that contrast, really, that the path of the just is a shining light because they walk it in the glorious gospel of Christ and they walk it in his light and his commandments, like the book says. But the opposite, the flip side of that is that those for the way of the wicked is walking in the darkness and they stumble. They stumble at that light because the way they stumble in the dark is because they don't want to see that light. They don't want to uh, have mm -hmm. their paths illuminated to walk to where the Lord is telling us to get to this eternal life, to get to the salvation. And again, like the sister brought out when you went to Proverbs chapter six, that one commandment for the commandment is a lamp and thy law is light and reproof of instructions are the way of life. Nobody wants to be reproved. Nobody wants instructions. We just want to do what we mm -hmm. want to do. But yet we don't understand it's going to be a judgment day judging us like uh, the book says Jesus has come to judge and give every man according as his works is. Mm -hmm. So if your works are wicked, you're going to get a wicked man's reward. And if your works are righteous, you're going to get a just man's reward, which is the kingdom. And then you close it out. And that's St. John, the 12th chapter. And I really like 35 and 36 because he says, walk while you have the light or less darkness will come upon you. So once you get outside this book, and we have seen the sisters and brothers, we've seen sisters and brothers walking in the gospel, but for some reason, they just get away from it. And all of a sudden, the Lord took that oil out their lamp, and now they're walking around in darkness. Some of them is eating yeah. pork, some of them going back to Sunday church, some of them is keeping Christmas and all these other holidays. But Jesus even says, said, while you have the light, believe in it, that you can be children of the light. If you want to make sure yes, that sir. we are children of the Lord, because the Lord has mercy on his children. And the last place it says, uh, whosoever believes me shall not abide in darkness because you walking in darkness. You don't know where you're going, but we know where you're going. That's a lake of fire. And that's what's so dangerous about it. If you don't want to walk in this gospel, and you don't want to see your path lit up. You, you're going to stumble right into that lake of fire, sister and brothers, because you are rejecting the Lord the life that he gave us. So excellent Man. exhortation, like uh, Justin says. And I turn it back over to the panel. Man. All right. Thank you, Tony. That Praise is so Lord. true. Amen. Yes, indeed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. So I just want to take another moment and ask our viewing audience to uh, like the video, share the video. This is a beautiful message uh, and leave us a comment. Also subscribe to the Israel of God. All right. So I want to thank the four of you brothers for laboring out here in this, I would say hot Arizona sun, but it's not really that hot today <laughs> compared to what it could be. Or should be in May. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for bringing this word uh, to us uh, and all, for all your uh, service to the Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, I want to give a heartfelt thank you to our um, head pastor, Brother Bowie. Um, who's been laboring and working in this vineyard and bringing this beautiful message, um, bringing us this light for more than 50 years. So I just want to give a shout out to him. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. So Amen. Peace and bless the viewers and everyone uh, on the panel. We hope you got some understanding. Uh, remember to keep the Sabbath holy. 
and give God his glory. And with that, we're out. Jesus. Peace. This is a brother. Amen. Jesus' name. Jesus Peace and Jesus. Mm -hmm. From leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations, we're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now.